You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Since 2012, hundreds of people have been fatally shot by or died in the custody of L.A. County police officers. One of those victims is Gretario Mack. Mack was shot multiple times by officers in the middle of a mall amid a health crisis. None of the officers have faced any charges. Activists are rallying to combat L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti's proposal to increase the LAPD spending by 3%. Joining me now uh, is uh, Quintus Moore. Uh, he is uh, Quintus Moore, sorry, the father of Gretario uh, Mack, Quintus Moore, and Melina Abdullah, Black Lives Matter Los Angeles. Certainly glad to have uh, both of you here. And certainly, um, Mr. Uh, first, Mr. Moore, we're sorry for, for your loss. Uh, Melina, I want to start with you. Increase the spending of the LAPD by 3%. Most people have no idea that most of these major cities, 30 to 40 percent of the entire city budget is going to police departments. Right. Well, in Los Angeles, it's actually far worse than that. We're spending 53 percent of the city's general fund on L.A. police, LAPD. Um, so that means those are dollars that are not going to housing, that are not going to health care, that are not going to mental health resources. And Mr. Quintus will talk about how Grishario Mack was having a mental health issue and asked for help. Had mental health resources been available instead of LAPD coming in with, quote unquote, every gun blazing in the uh, words of one witness, then we'd have this father of two still with us. So it's absolutely unthinkable that the mayor of the city who claims to be a liberal continues to increase the budget of LAPD when we know that they are one of the most murderous law enforcement units in the entire nation and absolutely one of the most corrupt um, who now have a, we actually won a restraining order against LAPD based on their brutality. Where do you get a restraining order against the police? But they're so corrupt, so brutal, so violent that that's what we had to do is seek court intervention. Uh, Mr. Uh, Morris, uh, speak to that, uh, because what we're seeing, we're seeing this reckoning all across this country. Uh, when it comes to police departments, when it comes to uh, spending, you've got folks who are like, oh, you shouldn't be saying defund the police department. No, what we're saying is stop sitting here increasing the spending on the cops. Shift those resources to mental health professionals, to social workers, uh, the folks who don't show up and automatically shoot to kill. Uh, I think I think you're on mute. I think you're on mute. So just unmute your, uh, unmute your uh, computer. Uh, keep talking. Uh, he's still on mute. Uh, control room, can y'all please uh, work this out? Uh, see what's going on here, Melina. I want to go to you. Uh, Melina, I want to go to you to that point right there again. How we spend the resources? Okay, there we go. There we go, Mr. Mr. Moore. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Um, now we well, got first, you. Go, go ahead. First of all, I know uh, you know some police officers. Um, the sheriff's department in L.A. They go to to the academy for four months. LAPD, the officers go to the academy for seven months. Um, mental health workers and therapists and psychologists, they go to school for, what, four years or more? And these officers, um, they train them so, so, so many months with weapons, so many months with something else, something else, something else. And they, they're not equipped or trained to do um, mental health crisis work. or the, um, A lot of them can't even handle domestic violence um, issues. So we need those funds to go to people who know what they're doing when there are situations that call for mental health, um, you know, help. And the police officers aren't equipped. They're trained to kill. They're supposed to apprehend, but as we've seen across this country, what they're doing is killing. And in the case of my son, he was having a mental crisis in a, in a public crowded mall in the daytime with thousands and thousands of shoppers, men, women, and children, and my son was having a mental crisis. He had a, he had a little kitchen knife with him. Like, we used to carry pocket knives back in the day. He had a little kitchen knife. He was he was um, paranoid, and he asked the security guard 
And some of the patrons in the mall said, why don't you call the police? They said, no, if we call the police, we know what might happen. And that's what exactly what happened. My son asked the security guard for help. The security guard said, okay, I'll get you some help. She went to call her dispatcher, not the police. And she said, there's a gentleman in the mall. He's a young man. He's, he has a little kitchen knife, but he's having some mental issues. And he's asking for help. Could you send someone over to help him? Um, the dispatcher hung up, immediately called LAPD in a frantic tone of voice. There's a black man in the mall with a knife. And LAPD rushed over like gangbusters. Uh, witnesses said they came in like Navy SEALs. My son was already paranoid and scared. So when they started yelling at him and training all these guns on him, he immediately started running for his life. And he had every right to, to do that because we know what happened. And as he ran, they started shooting him in the back. And, you know, the back of the leg, the back of the arm, in his, in his buttocks. He fell. He got up. This is the first time. He got up. He started running again. They shot him some more. He fell again for the second time. My son got up, and people are screaming at, to the top of their lungs while all this is going, in, going on. They shot up GameStop where kids were shopping. They shot up TJ Maxx to play glass window out. They shot a glass railing out that fell to the bottom where people were shopping. Uh, people were running around screaming and hollering, grabbing their babies and, and baby clothes. It, it, it was just, it was, it was surreal. And um, as my son got up for the third time and started running, they shot him in the back of his leg. He fell again, rolling for the third time, laid there in a fetal position in a puddle of blood. But thanks to Black Lives Matter, we were able to get an independent autopsy. All of those first seven, six or seven shots were non-life threatening. My son would have still lived, but you know, the knife had fell. No longer deemed a threat. He was not, never a threat. The police were the threat. They shot like 15 times in the mall. Seven or eight of the bullets hit my son. They were the threat. And as he lay there in the fetal position, they walked over point blank range and shot him in the chest and killed him after he asked for help. And so um, I know Billy Holiday had that song, Strange Fruit. There's a lot of strange fruit going on in L.A. And L LAPD and the Sheriff's Department are the most corrupt law enforcement agencies in, in, in America. And that LAOBR, the Law Enforcement Officer Bill of Rights, I, I know they took it down in Maryland. They need to get rid of it out here. These police associations are taking up for these cops. They're enabling them to do what they do, and they need to be dismantled. And um, if we commit a crime, we go to jail, they take us immediately to an interrogation room. The cops, due to these um, associations, they get to go take a week's vac paid vacation, get their lives straight and, get, and try to get their lives together and um, while they're getting paid and they just, they give them lawyers. They can't be personally sued. They have a fund for that. So, you know, it's just, they're just enabling them. And the, and, and the last thing I want to say, Martin, is that when we all got together and went to Sacramento for the um, AB392, the accountability bill, I remember one of the police association officers, he was on the, um, the con side. It was thousands and thousands of pros, but this one guy was on the con side. He was a cop, and they asked him, what do you have to say to fight, you know, this bill, Pat, from, you know, to keep this bill from passing? I'll never forget. He said, if this accountability bill passes, we'll have a hard time getting new recruits. Uh, Milana, that is just uh, unbelievable. It is unbelievable, but it's believable because that's what happens. And that's why. And I think Mr. Moore was really just um, really brilliant in presenting why we have to push back against these police associations that pretend to be unions, but are not unions. We have to remember that unions, I'm a member of a labor union. I'm an educator. Um, Mr. Moore is also an educator and a member of a labor union. Unions are not only about um, trying to push for the best salary and benefits for it, their members. They're about solidarity with working class people. Well, the police associations don't care about other working class people. They only care about the very narrow interests of their members. And so it's really important that we think about 
the role of these police associations. They're the ones who paid for the defense for the Derek Chauvin trial. Uh, Kim Potter, who stole the life of Dante Wright, was a president of her police association. And so as Mr. Moore is sharing, one of the things that we have to recognize as we push for accountability and push for something greater than accountability, push for justice, we have to recognize who our opposition is and do everything that we can to fight back against that opposition. So for us, what that means is ousting police associations from the House of Labor. They don't have any business in the same room as Mr. Moore and I. Um, we have to end the special rights like the Police Officers' Bill of Rights, like qualified immunity. And then something that you pointed to at the beginning, Roland, is, you know, it's police associations that are jockeying for, lobbying for, but also bullying and bribing elected officials so that they can continue to gobble up these massive shares of the cities and counties' public funds. And so what we have to do is recognize that they are our opposition and we have to really pull the fangs out of police associations and render them really useless so that we can move forward in what's in the best interest of our people. And that means protecting the life of Grishario Mack and doing good work in his name. Um, that means moving police out of mental health calls, moving police out of traffic stops in the name of people like Dante Wright, and really advancing the things that the community needs, things like mental health resources and good jobs and reentry programs and housing. Um, Mr. Moore, a final comment from you. What, what do you want the folks who are watching and listening to do? Well, we want um, to, like Melina, Sister Melina said, to in these associations, get rid of the law enforcement officers' bill of rights. The chief out here, the, police, the LAPD chief, Michael Moore, said he couldn't fire a cop if he wanted to because of the um, power that they have. The police commission uh, found what those cops did to my son out of policy, yet nothing has been done to them at all. And one more thing, Roland, I wanted to leave you with. We all saw the movie Training Day. That The cops that stopped that guy at the gas station, the, 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 the Army veteran, the Army officer, that guy who, who did that to them was a training officer. The one, the one who shot Dante Wright, she was a training officer. The one who killed George Floyd, he was training those other officers that helped him kill George Floyd. The, and they always want to cry, we need more training, we need more training. But look what the training officers are training them to do. Make a great point, sir. Both of you, I appreciate your work. Uh, please let us know what more we can do, and we'll look forward to having you back. Thank, thank you. you so much for having us, Roland. Thanks a bunch. Thanks, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends, go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it, please do because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.